So my first question to you is, considering that most people know you from Blackish, Grownish, uh, and they know you for doing comedy, why did you want to do something dramatic, and what made you choose this piece? Huh. Um, well, I was fortunate enough to get approached with the script from Simon Story, who's our director and writer. Um, and he had already created a short, and so I had the opportunity to watch the short, and I kind of fell in love with it. I was like, let's make this, we have to make this. And so I hounded him every week until he gave me the producer credit. Um, and then we finally started getting it rolling. Um, we fundraised, we, we made this on a shoestring budget, it was around 750, which is really small for really uh, small. Uh, a, a film. So I'm very, very, very happy with the way that it turned out. Simon's a genius when it comes to editing. We cut it together, we did the whole thing. Um, and yeah, I think I just resonated with, with Daniel. I was, I've was i been doing a lot of work with the National Foster Youth Institute. Um, and foster youth is kind of something uh, that, I don't know, I, I never gave much thought to, which sounds horrible, but um, it wasn't something that I often thought about. Uh, and <laughs> Seems like we got a mic in the room. <laughs> Where is that? Can we bring it over here? No, it's okay. Um, but after talking to a lot of foster youth, I, I kind of got inspired and I was like, okay, I have a project. <laughs> Just yes. as much as he's made you laugh, he made you feel something. So my question to him is, why do you think comedic actors are able to go from comedy to drama, maybe win an Oscar, but a dramatic actor often is not that funny? Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, I don't know. That's a big question. I feel like um, when it comes to comedy versus drama, all that kind of stuff, um, I feel like at the end of the day, it's all acting. It just, um, you get the material, you digest it, you kind of just approach it. I mean, it's, all, it's like trying to solve a puzzle. Like you're trying to, and you have a partner, you have somebody else who's working on that puzzle with you. Um, so I think the transition for, you know, just happens naturally, I would say. I think uh, you should be uh, approaching every single piece that you look at. Um, I wouldn't say through the same lens, but approach it to kind of solve the problem and figure out what you want from the scene, what your, your character wants. Um, there we go. Thank you. Oh my God. Wow, a lot of feedback. There you go. Um, Are there two? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't think that one's working. No, 
You know what, I'm just gonna use my voice. I'm just gonna use my voice. Can you guys hear me in the back? Yeah. Okay, perfect, cool. Um, I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. We're, we're actors, we're, you know, it doesn't matter what mask you put on, you just have to approach the piece, just kind of open and willing to figure things out. All right, uh, Mike, my, my next question is for you, what, in making this, what was the most challenging part and what's been the most rewarding part? Um, the most challenging part of making it, I think, was getting it made and getting it greenlit was the most challenging part. Uh, that's, like, once we were on set and once we had all of our, our pieces in place, um, we had Cliff, we had Cedric, we had, um, we had Lonnie, who did an amazing job. Um, it was, it was, it was kind of smooth sailing. Um, they're excellent scene partners. Everything flowed really well. Simon had a vision. Um, I think you know, getting a greenlit, as with anything in this industry, is the most difficult part. Um, so yeah, I'd say that 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 was the, the most rewarding. rewarding. The most rewarding was getting to see it here today with you guys. Um, getting to see it in theaters. That's I mean, there's nothing more rewarding than that. All right, maybe I'll open it up. Does anybody here have questions? Because I could ask some questions all night. Right there. Um, I'm just curious, uh, since you come from mostly doing comedic stuff, uh, do you prefer doing more comedy or more drama? Huh. Um, I don't, I honestly don't have a preference. Um, I kind of, it just depends on the script for me, really. It depends on the story. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't really have like a genre preference, I would say. Well, it's a boring answer, but it's the truth. <laughs> All right, I have a question for you. Uh, jumping off of what he said, to me, uh, I think your, as you define your art, your art defines you. So making this film, this is the first film you got the executive producer credit, you really wanted this to happen. What have you learned about yourself in making this film? Oh, I learned that producing is really hard which I didn't expect. I've, I've given producers a lot of shit for a lot of years, uh, and I feel kind of bad now. Um, no, I, I think I, looking inwardly, I, I think I also learned that I'm very analytical, which um, is a very helpful skill when it comes to producing and not so helpful when you're an actor. Um, I kind of, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know, I really like, I try to problem solve everything. Like you heard me say, I approach acting like a problem to solve. Um, and so I think I learned that that I have a very analytical brain. Okay. Right here. What do you want us to walk away from um, from this film? Huh. Um, I think I want everyone to walk away from How I Learned to Fly with the feeling that no matter how hopeless and dire your situation is, you can always learn how to fly. You know what I mean? Daniel escaped in his mind to his, you know, his fly scape or whatever. That's what I called it in my head. And I don't know that you can you can dream. You know what I mean? To be not where you are because I mean you, you could not be in as dire of a situation as Daniel or Eli but we all face challenges each and every day um, and you know it's being able to overcome those with mental fortitude that um, kind of creates a better future for yourself so I think you know being able to weather the storm is very important and that's kind of what I got from the film and what I took from the film and and you know wherever you place your mindset that's where you're gonna go so. right here and then you well first congrats on the film thank you super exciting um, what was your casting process for the actors um, from like a guidance counselor to Eli and how involved were you um, I honestly was not super involved in casting except for our main cast members um, so I don't know, I mean, obviously I love Lonnie from This Is Us, and um, I think he was the most pivotal role in the film. Um, and yeah, I just, there's something about, he has like, um, 
kind of an old soul and it was like it was super fun to hang out with them each and every day on set that I was like we did a really good job with this one um and he I don't know he had a wisdom about him when we met and and we talked and, and discussed Eli and I just I just knew that he could do it I, I don't know how to explain it um and obviously meth and and, and Cedric there was there was no auditioning process for that we were just like yo we got a role for y'all so pull up uh, so yeah, there. Bye. Was, was it hard for you to come out in that character? Um, I mean, at night it was like, I don't know. It's like I'm, I'm used to a lot of the other projects that I, I've worked on in the past. It's like you go home and you kind of leave your your work on set. Um, and this character, I was just so emotionally exhausted each and every day. It was like, damn, can anything work out for them? Um, and yeah, it just, it was definitely, I mean, after we, we wrapped, I was like, shit, I'm out of here, y'all. I'm headed to, to Mexico for a little vacation. Um, so after that, it was definitely easy to step out. But um, every night going home was was definitely a, a challenge. Even watching it right now, I had to sometimes put my hat down because I was like, damn, this is some trauma bonding type of shit. Um, so yeah, it was hard. All the way in the back. Um, what was one of the most happiest moments of the, the show? As you see, it's summer mostly, but mm -hmm. I want to know like, what was happiest for you? Happiest? I like that question because what I like about our movie so much is that while they get kicked so much while they're down, um, there are moments of triumph and they do finally succeed in the end. It's a very classic tale, but um, I feel like it's just, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, there's a lot of bad shit happening to us and it's always nice to have something to look forward to. And so the happiest moment, um, hmm, I don't know, I love filming all the laundromat scenes and see, they were really fun. Um, Michelle is hilarious. Uh, we, I remember a driver's license by Olivia Rodrigo came out um, while we were on set and we watched the music video and like sang it in the trailer. And that was like one of my happiest moments on set. Folks, a little bit when you, when you got the answer. You were, that was kind of hard. I like that. I'm going to take that. Oh, oh, 2017. Let's get it. Just like everyone else does, you just you keep it pushing. You um, try to do the best that you can, and just yeah, I don't even know. I'd, I'd have to look inward and meditate a little bit on that one. Just figure it out, I guess. Yeah. All right, I have a question for you. A lot of your performance, even though neither of you have a lot of dialogue, and a lot of what happens plays out in your face, your body language. What would you say you drew upon? experience you believe it helped you inform your performance? I feel like, I mean, I don't know, we've all had those difficult um, moments when it comes to familial relations. Um, and I, I kind of try to draw upon those. Um, I don't know, once I, once I was in it, um, I kind of started to, to feel what Daniel was feeling in a weird way. And I don't know, I just, I, I felt like I was Daniel. I kind of just like pulled on his experience and what was happening. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, our, our other actors who were in the film, Method Man, Cedric, Lonnie, Everybody did such a fantastic job that it kind of placed me right where I was supposed to be. Um, so I feel like I was drawing off of their energy. They were feeding off of my energy. Um, and yeah, it's just a really fucked up situation. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just, you know, I thought about where Daniel would be in those moments and in that headspace um, and seeing Eli struggle with what he had to go through with, you know, all of his traumas related to losing their family, and I just, I kind of pulled on that stuff. Um, yeah, that was it. Very good. 
question. Yeah. Okay, right there at the back, and then you. Um, what was the biggest thing you learned, like either as an actor or your first time being an executive producer, like over the course of this project, if you could take away like one thing, what would you say? Get out of your head. Um, I think that's, I like I said, I'm very analytical. I tend to overthink everything. Um, and I think just leaping into things, like taking that first step is the most important step. Um, and continuing to take those steps and moving towards your goal. That's from the producer side. I think from the actor side, also get out of your head. Um, <laughs> and just, you know, just live and breathe and um, be present. I think just be in that moment, which is like, you know, the most tried and true advice, but just being present and being in the moment is the most important thing we can do as actors and to just truly listen to somebody. Um, which I think is a very valuable skill in life, but also very important in acting. So, yeah, mine is more of a comment. Yeah, because watching you from Blackish up until this point, I've seen how you've grown, and just I mean, beautiful job. Thank you. I had just also wanted to kind of get in, you know, a sense of like where your head was in this movie. Do you tend to like being uh, being the character? Do you find that it stays with you sometimes, even after this is all over? Um, I don't I, I feel like whenever you you perform or you're, or, or you're becoming a character, you always have to bring a little piece of yourself to that character. And I think that's very important. And also as actors, we try to, you know, be chameleons and, and change, um, but, one of the most important marks of like, you know, mega mega actors, legends like Denzel and people like that, is that they're bringing a part of themselves to every role. Um, and so I think, yeah, of course, you know, a little bit of the character is gonna come with you when you bring yourself to it. Um, but I tend to try to leave things on set. You know what I mean? So at this point, I feel like I'm fully me. I'm not gonna pull an Austin Butler and start talking like Elvis. So. <laughs> All right, I have another question. Uh, you know, doing a film like this, I think for everybody here, I mean, and anybody that sees the film, it makes mm -hmm. you realize how fragile things are when things are happening. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, we've all read how most people in this country are maybe a couple paychecks away from some of the disasters. For you now, having played this and been in that head, when you see someone, corner of your eye, or you see homeless, do you look at them any differently now? Not that you were not sympathetic, but do you, do you, are they any more real to you than before? Um, they've always been real to me. Um, a person is a person at the end of the day. Um, and you know, I'm from Los Angeles, and I feel like um, you know we've been having a big issue with the homeless crisis. And I see all this anti-homeless architecture where they put the spikes on the park benches. Um, and it just blows my mind. I'm like, we're treating this like like a problem, like an infestation. Or these are people. Like you can't just will them away or like fix, throw money at the problem and fix it. And each person has their own individual needs. Um, yeah, uh, and basic needs. And basic needs. My my uncle Vaughn, um, you know, uh, he he had he, he just passed, passed away recently, recently. and um, he was homeless for a while. Um, and I mean, he's a person. He mattered. He had amazing ideas. He was. He wanted to travel to Egypt. He had all these ideas about astrolabes and astrophysics and all this stuff I didn't, I didn't understand, but um, yeah, it's just like, it's not, I don't know. Everyone's a person, so that's just it. That's just it. Oh, wow, I didn't expect this to get like real, <laughs> y'all. Do you think the police in LA would be as sympathetic as that one policeman was? Girl, no, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't realistic in that aspect, right? I see what you're saying. Um, 
I don't know, like I said, people are people, you know, there are individuals who are officers who might, you know, be as nice as that officer was in our film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe it wasn't a completely accurate portrayal. <laughs> I'll give you that. Hi, first of all, that was really great, thank you. Thank um, you. So I just have questions that kind of just want like your piece. Mm -hmm. So did you, what did you pay for the set? Anything that you liked that you got to keep from the set? A toothbrush? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know every time I looked up, I was like, this man is about his hygiene. Nails fully grown out, but but he's brushing his teeth, I'll tell you that. Um, I took my Kirkland jeans. Anybody who's here from TikTok, you know I took my Kirkland jeans. Uh, shout out Costco. This is not an advertisement, again. Um, but the jeans I was wearing in the movie, they fit me unbelievable. So I took them. So, that was, that was the, the, the perks of, you know, being on set. Shout out to the executive producer. Like executive yeah. producer, you know. Yeah, exactly. I was like, let me, let me just wipe those real quick. Right here. And then, yeah. Hey, um, I just want to say I love the bond that you guys had, like, between you and your brother. Because, like, you don't get to see many black men on screen mm -hmm. doing that. I love like, that. I don't know. That was the thing I love about the movie. Like, as I kept seeing you struggle with him, like, your brother, you're trying to, like, Communicate with him. It's like, I don't know, you still have that love mm. that you translated to the screen and like, you let us see it. But that wasn't my question. Um, I just wanted to say that was really good. Um, but the scene in where the brother gets drunk and he comes back and there's like writing on the wall. So on the ceiling. Was that done? Was that supposed to happen before he got drunk or was that as a result of him getting drunk? And then you were like, okay, hey, let me lay out some ground rules because you've been acting a little wild with this alcohol. I think it's supposed to be post him getting drunk. It's supposed to be uh, kind of me teaching him a lesson. And you know, with him being, um, at the time when we were filming, it was like, he's, he's mute, and then we didn't know if he was mute or if he was, you know, um, handy capable. Um, so we were trying to figure that out. And I think uh, our be my best means of communication was writing on the ceiling. I thought that was the easiest way to get through to him and I thought it was, you know, very brotherly. It's like, he's not gonna figure this shit out. Let me just literally write this shit out on the ceiling for him. Like, you need, no, we do not, you know, disobey the rules and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think it was in response to the party and the alcohol and, you know, him throwing up and we having to watch him, so. All right, I think she might be the last question. Do, how, how much, do we have time for two more questions? Five minutes left, okay. You, and then you. We'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I wanted to just say it was such a moving, beautiful film. Um, I was so moved by like, the Thank generosity you. of all the people in the film that came to help the boys. Um, and I know that like uh, you mentioned being friends with a lot of the actors and uh, really getting to bond with the actors. So I wanted just on a lighter note, um, were there any funny moments on set? I mean, because it was such a serious film, I don't expect a blooper reel or anything, but were there, <laughs> were there any funny moments? Um, there was definitely some pretty funny moments. In the, in the scene that I have with, uh, with uh, Method in the, the kitchen, when I like started crying, the first take that we had, I blew the biggest snot bubble you've oh, ever no. seen in your life. <laughs> And we were like in this terrifying moment and like we both just busted out laughing. Um, so that's a good one I have from said. Me and Lonnie filmed this hilarious TikTok and like you wouldn't get it unless you were there, but just know it was really funny. That's it. You did a wonderful job, I got to really see Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I my question was, out of all the characters that were in the film, because you read the review in Telescope, even though you're focusing on your role, um, because of your producer role, you understand um, the gravity it, that each character plays in the film. My question is, where did you see the most emotional intelligence or growth from you personally as an actor from a character? It's a light question. I know, it's a light <laughs> question to, to end off our evening. Um, <laughs> A really good question. Um, Can you repeat the question? Uh, oh, where I did you basically hear. see the most emotional intelligence? Like, which character gave him the most um, introspection, I guess, towards who we, how can, he can grow as an actor? Um, I think 
uh, probably Eli. I don't know. There was so much that Lonnie did without uh, saying anything that I felt like was so valuable to me as an actor. Um, and being able to watch him, I was I was learning. I was like taking notes. I was like, go off, little bro. Um, so yeah, I think watching Eli's performance was my biggest learning lesson. All right, well, I think we should give a large round of applause. Um, we have Gronish coming out at the uh, beginning of next year, the second half of our final season, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, Narrating, yes, I'm doing a little bit of narrating, y'all. It's gonna be fun. Um, and yeah, I mean, watch How I Learned to Fly when it comes out on Stars. Uh, that'll be very exciting. Um, and I'm gonna be the next Batman. That's a dream, y'all. That's a dream. <laughs>